I still clearly remember every detail from 20 years ago. I live with it every day. In the spring of 1989, construction worker Tsi Jiryong had to cross the square every evening to get home. Like so many, he heard the roar of the tanks and became curious. As I arrived in the square, there was this really loud noise. It was the sound of tank engines and armored cars. I suddenly thought, how could the army, the people's army, drive so fast? I even naively thought that they were disregarding traffic regulations. People had linked arms to try and stop the army, but the tanks just drove straight into the crowd. Blood burst out. Imagine people's heads under the tanks, completely smashed. I saw it happen with my own eyes. It was a bloodbath. They were just ordinary people, civilians, unarmed. What could they do to stop tanks? They just crushed the bodies. I couldn't bear it. Tank tracks are made of metal, and they flatten the barriers as if they were noodles. Imagine them running over people's bodies. I was too frightened to look. Everyone ran away into the alleyways to hide. With main roads filled with troops, the narrow alleys were the only escape route. These became the killing fields, away from the square, out of sight of the cameras. Suddenly I heard soldiers behind me, running fast. I could tell they were well trained. They wore white armbands and helmets, but they had removed their badges. They were shooting while running. I fell to the ground. I really thought that was the end for me. The people around me used their shirts to stop the bleeding and carried me to the hospital. Many more wounded were lying on the floor, at least 500. The Communist Party have always said they respect human rights, but they won't admit that they shot me and prevent me from telling the truth about June the 4th. They've been lying for 20 years. <laughs> Speaking up is dangerous. So today, Jerry Yong finds support from a Christian congregation that worships in secret. He has no job and has never received compensation for losing a limb. The victims embarrass today's Chinese state. History has been rewritten, and the younger generation is made blithely unaware that murder was done in the state's name. The cover-up began while we were still trying to count casualties in the hospitals. The medical staff in the hospital were absolutely terrified. They wanted so much for pictures to be taken of the people who'd been injured, and for the world to see those pictures. I have had confirmed from a senior doctor at the Medical Union Hospital that his colleagues around the city have estimated the number of dead that they themselves have seen at over a thousand people. Within the first few days, the Chinese Red Cross disclosed a number. They said 3,000. And 
all of a sudden they weren't allowed to talk. Because the government said no one died at Tiananmen Square. That was the first official position. No one died. The next position was, okay, people died, but they were mainly soldiers because the people were so mean to the soldiers. That became the second official stance, and I don't think they've ever modified that. Twenty years on, we do not know how many died. More than a thousand is highly likely, perhaps several thousand. The authorities did admit to the deaths of over 200 civilians, and they've claimed that 6,000 soldiers were injured and scores died. In the weeks that followed, tens of thousands of so-called counter-revolutionaries were arrested for crimes against the state. Many of the students, the lucky elite, had party connections and were spared. Workers who'd protested had no such protection. The state vented its fury on them and conducted a series of show trials. Some just disappeared, presumed executed, among them the anonymous tank man. The demonstrations of 1989 were not limited to Beijing. There were large protests in scores of other cities, like Chengdu. Here, there was no bloodshed, but even then, wide-scale retribution followed. I've come here to meet someone who suffered at the hands of the state. But today, the not-so-secret policemen are on our tail. Oh, Dios. Oh, this is good. This morning, we appear to have company. Old habits die hard, and as we left the hotel, uh, other vehicles left with us. One appeared to be a rather discreet silver saloon, uh, but following us also is a rather bright violet-colored little car, and it's been on our tail all the way. We hurriedly invent a detour and cook up a cover story. We're a group of harmless organic farming enthusiasts. Not that I know a great deal about organics. On the other hand, there are times when you have to take an interest, especially when other people are rather interested as well. Very nice cabbage. Symbol of good luck, actually. Mm. 